Great. So let's let's uh, dig into the data. So, um, so you know, every year the Institute of International uh, Education releases their annual Open Doors report, and you know this report does a fantastic job of uh, of answering questions around how many students are traveling outside of their home countries, where they go, uh, what they study, and, and it's a really important study um, around international uh, education. But it doesn't ask the additional questions to discover how students are. Making making their college decisions. Our study chooses to dig, is, uh, chose to dig a little bit deeper. We asked why are students choosing to leave their country to study? What influences them? What are they, what are they concerned about? How do they prefer to communicate? And, what can, and how can we do better uh, as marketers and as admissions representatives uh, to address those needs? So first, a little information, background information about the research. So the research report was a survey of uh, non-U.S. college-bound students. It was conducted in January 2013. Uh, this was a joint effort between Noel Levitz and College Week Live. The data source was uh, College Week Live international students who had registered at, at uh, College Week Live. And we had 1,980 surveys completed. Uh, the demographics of respondents was that 72% of respondents were high school seniors, 11% uh, were high school juniors, 5% were so high school sophomores, 4% were high school freshmen, and 4% were parents. And in terms of a, uh, of a mix of where these students were from, so you'll see that we were really excited to have actually 146 countries um, participate in the survey. So, and we, for the purposes of analysis, broke out China and India separately from Asia, from the rest of Asia. So you'll see how the distribution uh, flowed across regions. And we, we will use these regional breakouts to, uh, to dig into the data throughout the survey. You'll see that we also pulled out Latin America, uh, that includes Spanish-speaking countries, and then put the rest of uh, Central America and Caribbean together, and that's, that's meant to be uh, countries that do not speak Spanish. Um, the next uh, slide is, how likely are you to study outside of your home country? And we asked this question early in the survey, um, and we used it to define our, uh, our population of uh, responders. We see that, you'll see that the vast majority, 89% of respondents said they were at least 50% likely to study outside of their home country. And for the remainder of this report, we're going to focus on the group that said that we consider to then be qualified respondents. So for the purposes of the analysis, we're going to look at only people who responded that said that they were at least 50% likely to attend college outside of their home country. So now let's dig into the expectations that students have about the admissions process. We first asked, uh, how many colleges will they apply to? And you'll see that uh, 11 to 15 percent, so 9 percent, sorry, said that they would apply to 11 to 15 colleges. 4 percent said 16 plus. Uh, six, 27 percent said they plan to apply to 6 to 10 colleges. And 44 percent, the majority, said that they would apply to 3 to 5 colleges. And when you dig in a little bit deeper and look at this regionally, you'll see some, uh, some interesting distinctions. Um, the lowest applications were from the sub-Saharan Africa region, where 28% of respondents said they intended to apply to two or less colleges. And China uh, had the highest applications, where 28% of respondents said they intended to apply to 11 or more colleges. So one important thing is that uh, we're talking about um, these respondents were all high school students in the in the years that I uh, that I outlined earlier in the survey. So it's important to say this is what they were the number of schools that they intended to apply to. So we're talking about what they um, what they expect to do, not necessarily what they actually did. 
Next slide. So we then asked, you know, what is your main concern that might prevent you from attending a college or university outside of your home country? And you'll see that 56% of respondents said that funding is their top concern. And then if you look at the, at the more secondary concerns, uh, you'll see that safety in the surrounding area, safety on campus, no friends or family nearby, uh, my parents are concerned, language barrier and cultural differences were all in the single digits and there was there was somewhat of a pretty even distribution in those in those single digits for other concerns but by and far the largest issue was uh, was funding when you started to look at this data regionally you'll see that there's some pretty big differences so uh, for students from China, they were least concerned about funding with only 40% of respondents citing that as a main concern. But they were more likely to be concerned about safety in the surrounding area. So 18% of respondents said, of Chinese respondents said that they were most concerned about safety in the surrounding area. So the opportunity here is as, as you start to think about your communication plans for Chinese students, you may want to uh, make sure that you're weighting your communication to address both of those concerns. Uh, interestingly, Canadian uh, students said that they were most likely to get homesick. So 50 per, uh, sorry, 20 percent of Canadian respondents said that they were concerned about having no friends or family nearby. And I think you know that makes a lot of sense when you think about uh, there's there's fewer, there's not a language barrier or, or really a, a large cultural difference between uh, Canadian students coming to study in the United States. So it makes sense that that they would be more likely to be concerned about uh, about not having family and friends nearby. Given funding uh, was such a big issue, we thought we'd dig a little deeper and ask students, how do students expect to fund their education? And you'll start to see that there are some significant variances by region. Um, and the blue bar is that uh, the US is a US college, university, financial aid, or scholarship, followed by the orange bar, which is personal or family. Um, and then the uh, the other differences are much smaller, meaning a, a scholarship, uh, sorry, sponsorship program in the U.S., uh, a foreign government or university, and sponsorship program in my country. But overwhelmingly, you can see that be between 70 and 80 percent of respondents, regardless of region, uh, were expecting some type of, uh, of funding from a U.S. college or university in the form of financial aid or a scholarship. Um, Interesting, when you start to look at those numbers were higher for Asia, ex excluding India and China, and then Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa. And you also, what's interesting about this is when you start to compare what the students' expectations are for funding, it varies significantly from what the Open Doors report says the reality is. So interesting for, for those of you in, in admissions uh, and enrollment marketing is to think about how do you um, recognize that students have this expectation that they're going to get financial aid or a scholarship from a university with the reality that only 21% or 21.5% are actually going to receive uh, the, um, aid from a student from a U.S. university as the primary source of funds. So interesting uh, differences there in perception and versus uh, what they expect versus what reality. So now we're going to dig into, you know, what influences these international students. So we'll start with, uh, with parents. So how influential are parents? And we were actually surprised given the fact that students were going to, uh, were relying on parents for the financial, um, for, for funding for their college. We were, we were surprised to see that 42% of students said that they make the decision on their own. And 56% said that they make the, the decision jointly with their parents. Uh, interestingly, the Europe, we thought that it was interesting that European students thought that they were in charge, where 62% of European students said that they make the decision. 
The next slide is, you know, what factors influence the decision to attend university outside of your home country? And you'll see that um, that it's very interesting to see that that without any doubt, the biggest driver was having a particular dream school in mind. And, uh, and we thought this was pretty staggering. And I think for colleges out there who don't have the same brand recognition as some of the more applied to colleges, there's clearly a lot of relationship building to do. And so this is interesting to see that international students um, are very influenced in studying outside, that, that that influence is driven by a particular school. Um, but it's in, when you start to dig in a little deeper regionally, you'll see that there's some interesting uh, regional differences. So the number two reason for Asia and Latin America was attending an international high school. So there's, they've been on a path to study outside of, uh, of the US, and this is just a continuation of that path. Uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa, the number two reason was that this uh, perception that there were no higher education opportunities in their home country. For India, the number two reason was my siblings studied abroad, so there's, there's the family legacy. And then in China, the number two reason was to avoid home country testing and, uh, and requirements. So then we then said, how influential are the following expectations on application decisions? And uh, the good news here is that um, after rankings and after uh, the university website and rankings, conversations were very, were very influential. And you'll see there's a wide range of, um, of experiences that positively influence or can positively influence an international applicant. Um, what we thought was interesting was that after college rankings and university websites, and, and you know a lot of you out there should feel really good, a lot of colleges work hard on their college rankings and their university websites, so that looks like that's time well spent, um, that, that those are influential experiences. But the next, the next uh, most important thing was to, was actually, um, sorry, I just clicked one slide too many. Okay, so, so what was interesting was the, the role of conversations with students and with admissions reps was the next most influential experience, and then followed by campus tours. And it's interesting, when we look at campus tours on the domestic, when you look at U.S. students, that's always, that ranks number one amongst U.S. students. Um, but when you look at it for international, I think it makes sense that, that it ranks significantly lower. And that's really a function of international students not being able to make it to campus um, in person. But we also see when you look at the regional differences, Asia, China, and India had the most significant preference uh, for, admit, for students um, over representatives. So you'll see conversations with students actually ranked higher than conversations with admissions representatives. And we think that that goes back to uh, international students wanting to feel like there's a place for them on campus. There's students who are, uh, who are similar to me, who are international students who, who have um, chosen this college and they feel that they can have a direct conversation with those students. Uh, the other thing that was interesting was to see that independent counselors and agents um, were quite low when you looked at them in aggregate, but when you actually look at the data regionally, uh, independent counselors and agents rated highest in, uh, in China and Sub-Saharan Africa. So certainly they play a large role in, uh, in influencing international students from, at a regional level, but less so when you look at the data in aggregate. So we then asked campuses, asked star students, uh, which colleges uh, will you visit and, and when? And, um, and the interesting thing here was that we, we then described that kind of data, your access to colleges, and, and to put you into four different buckets. So we described that the top bucket as full access. And 24% of students said that they um, expected to visit all potential colleges once or more. And it's very important as you look at this data, again, to recognize that this is their perceptions. Uh, this, is, this is what they think they'll be able to visit, not necessarily reality, um, because this data feels a little bit high. But uh, the second piece is, is that moderate access, so students who said that they expected to visit their top choice colleges once was 32% of students. 
Low access was uh, students who might visit one or more college, and that was 30% of, uh, of respondents. And then no access, so 14% of uh, students of respondents said that they did not plan to visit any campuses. And so uh, while we think the good news is, is that 56% of international students do plan to, uh, to fall into these top two buckets of having some access to uh, colleges, either moderate or full access, that leaves 44% of respondents respondents who feel that they will likely not visit any campuses. So now I'm going to hand it over to, uh, to Krista to talk through a case study with SUNY.